chances are that you or a family member of yours has a pet. Maybe that is a dog or a cat or maybe even another animal like a few birds, chicken or even fish. What most of them have in common besides being really cool animals is that their food comes in a somewhat similar pellet shape. Our animal friends need those bulk goods on a regular basis to stay healthy and happy. Most of these pellets are roughly between 3 to 50 millimeters and depending on your animal or pet, the food that they eat can be some grain mixture or like with cats and dogs, it is oftentimes a mix of different dried ingredients. While our pets and animals love the moment that they get their food from us, it is also a task that needs to be repeated several times a day, every day of the week. So pretty much perfect conditions for something to be automated with a bit of engineering. Let me introduce you to Pedro. Pedro means pellet dispenser robot and is essentially a tiny device that automates the daily task of feeding your pet. Whether that is the dry food for your cat, the food pellets for your dog, or even the small corns that you feed your fish in a backyard pond, if you can consider those fish as your pet. Pedro can be powered with a wall plug or with one of these 12 volt power banks. That is cool because it allows you to place it pretty much anywhere and have it run for something like two weeks on that battery. I work on this project since the beginning of the year and I thought it would be interesting to show it in greater detail in, in one or two videos. So let's have a look into how it works, how the device was made and also how you can build one yourself if you want to do that. I hope you enjoy watching. Pedro is mainly made of 3D printed parts and a few other parts that can be ordered from the internet. On the back of the device are all the controls. There is a socket for the 12 volt power supply, the on off toggle switch, the two potentiometers to set the time and the volume, the push button and a small cap that gives you access to the USB-C port of the controller. The mechanism of the dispenser is fairly simple. On the inside there is a stepper motor that rotates a feed screw that then dispenses food through a nozzle. The time interval and the amount of food is controlled by the two potentiometers on the back of the device. The control for time sort of works like a timer until the next meal. If it is dialed all the way up it takes 24 hours until another meal gets dispensed and if dialed all the way down it will dispense food every 5 minutes. The other potentiometer sets the amount of screw rotations when a dispension is triggered. That is between 1 and 10 rotations of the screw. The push button can be used to manually dispense a meal and also has some more functionality. I put all the controls on the back of the device so that the front is clean and also that the pad doesn't accidentally change the volume to twice as much, for example. Even though I'm certain your pets would like that. This prototype has been through a ton of design iterations, which is one reason why the build is very modular. So if something structural needs to be changed, there is no need to reprint the whole build. Let's have a look into how the pieces fit together. One Pedro consists of 11 3D printed parts that are all assembled together. I personally like to print mine in Pusam and PETG or Polyterra PLA. Although I think in the long run you would want to print this device in a food grade filament or a stainless steel nozzle. The base part contains the heart of the device, which is an Arduino Nano and a stepper driver on a custom made PCB. They are located in a way that you can still access the USB port through a tiny cap that I clip on a hinge in the base part. The PCB with the connectors on it was developed by my good friend Sebastian. He made a really awesome job with the whole layout and I'm super happy that I don't have to plug everything into a breadboard anymore. Also shout out to PCBWay for providing the PCBAs for this project. It was the first time I ordered a PCB for one of my projects, so naturally I had a lot of questions in regards to all the different settings. PCBWay support team was super quick with the response and the order was ready within a few days. My friend and I are also working on the certifications for this board and they also stay to manufacture compliant to RHS, REACH and different ISO standards. For ordering a PCB there, you just have to upload the Gerber files 
and specify your specific needs, like choosing the color, the PCB material, or the surface finish. In the base part, there's also the 12 volt power jack. On top of the assembled PCB in the base comes the middle part. This piece is stacked on top of the base and three screws hold the parts together. In between the parts, I added these small cones that help align the prints perfectly. I will go into much greater detail in an assembly video that I'm working on. A link to that video will be put in the info box. The middle part is the most complex one. The stepper motor is fastened to this part with two screws and the feed screw is pushed over the motor shaft. The outlet of this part is connected to the nozzle through four pins. These pins are pressed into the four printed holes. On the back of the middle part are all the controls that are plugged into the pedal board. The last big part of the dispenser is the flake tank that is again stacked onto the middle part and fastened with three screws. To close the device off, there is a lid that interlocks to the flake tank when it is rotated about 45 degrees. This prevents a mess in case the parts would flip over because your pet wasn't careful that day. In the same lid are four holes for an optional silica bag mount to keep the food as dry as possible. The standard settings for the dispension is quite fast and big pellets sometimes get stuck. That's why I added a safe mode in the program that switches the dispensing sequence to a mix of forward and backward rotations. That has shown much better results with big pellets and if you want to be certain that the device doesn't clock. Since I did not install any output like an LED that shows in which mode the device is, I added a small jingle with the motor frequencies that indicates the switch into another mode. If you switch to the safe mode with five pushes of the button, a part of the song Rain by Rob Scallon is played. If you switch back to the standard mode, you can hear the Super Mario jingle. Thank you to White Shadow 11 on Instructables for providing this awesome tutorial on how to make music with a stepper motor. Again, I want to point out that I will go into greater detail on technical aspects like the program in the second part of the video, the assembly video. I had the idea for the project when I worked on the flake dispenser of my recycling project TARS. I thought a similar design could be used to automate the daily job of my parents of feeding their two cats. The first prototypes of Pedro were with a pickles jar that we got from the local supermarket. Probably around 8 to 12 other prototypes followed this one, until I am now at a stage where I feel like the device really works reliably. In case you see an application for a pet roll for one of your pets and animals at home, you can purchase a download kit through the link in the description. I worked on this kit for the past three months and a lot of info and testing went into it. In the kit are all the cat files for the project with the current and former versions, in case you want to adapt anything to your specific needs, also all the STL files for 3D printing and additional media and infographics. Also there is the program for running the device and a lot of documentation that I made for the kit. Like a circuit diagram, different data sheets, and other explanations. Also, I created a ROM file that contains all the parts that you need to build on Pedro. A few more things to consider. If you print one of these yourself, you should really pay attention to the print quality by using a good printer and high-grade filament. While PLA in its pure form is considered food safe, some additives in certain filaments are not. That's why it's safest to go with a food grade filament and a stainless steel nozzle. If you have a PUSA printer, you can get a stainless steel nozzle from the internet, or if you use a Bamboo Lab printer, they have one by default. Another important thing is to carefully check every part that is in contact with the pellets. You don't want any strings of a print to end up in your pet's food, so pay attention that there is nothing left in your print. This download kit is not a guarantee that you will be able to build one of these, but I hope it gives you enough information to do so. If you think about building one, I recommend watching the second part of the video that will follow soon. 
If you're interested in the project or want to follow the journey, feel free to visit my Instagram where I document the development or have a look at my Ko-fi where I publish different design files or my Patreon if you consider supporting my project. Thank you for watching.